Coming up on today's show, we discuss LSU men's basketball taking on Vandy. And we take a trip down I-10 and take a look at what's going on down in New Orleans where the blues was born. I work with children. <laughs> it's Sports Showtime's bottom of the ninth, and it starts right now. Welcome to Sports Showtime's Bottom of the Ninth. I'm Alex Cheney. And I'm Patrick Clay, and we are in the Mardi Gras spirit here at Sports Showtime. I have, I was, I have a green jacket going on, purple bow tie, and of course... Got the Hornets Mardi Gras jersey on. Of course, on. Patrick would wear a Hornets jersey. But know. those NOLA jerseys, the Mardi Gras ones, they're pretty great. They're swanked. <laughs> <laughs> Following their last second comeback win against Mississippi State over the weekend, the LSU men's basketball team came home to take on the Vanderbilt Commodores Wednesday evening. Offensive output was limited for both teams, but especially for Vanderbilt as they shot only 19% from the field in the first half. LSU eventually pulled away with a 13-point lead, but almost let it slip in the end as Vanderbilt outscored the Tigers 38-26 in the second half. LSU would hold on to win 57-56 for their third straight victory and their fourth out of the past five. Following the game, LSU guard Malik Morgan talked about the team's recent trend of close finishes. We believe after every game, um, we kind of kind of get in the grind sometimes, but we got to find out how to push it through, and I think it brings us together as a team so we can know what we can really do at the end. Really quick, quickly, we'd like to give a quick shout-out to our station manager, Cindy Carter, the station advisor, who was at the game last night cheering for Vanderbilt. Sucks to suck. Disappointed. Dis-uh-pointed. A bright spot in the court right now, LSU sophomore point guard Anthony Hickey. Hickey is the NCAA leader in steals per game and has consistently made big shots for the Tigers all season. He's only a sophomore, so the future is bright for Hickey. Patrick, do you think Hickey is a legit draft prospect? I do not think coming as an underclassman, no. If he waits maybe another year, because he's got the steals, leading the nation in steals, that's amazing. But as a point guard, he's got to be able to get more consistent assists. And right now, what he brings to the table is three-point shots and then crazy unbalanced floaters. He's got to be able to get a more consistent, steady offensive game. But he's got the speed, and he's got the, the court vision. He's just he's a little short, and that might scare off some NBA draft prospects as well. So if he takes another year to hone his skills, maybe. I think he has a great raw skill set, but if he can put that together and turn into a basketball player, not just a prospect, if he can just hone that in, I think Higgy's going to be good. It's going to take a few years. Head into the gridiron. Yesterday's National Signing Day gave the LSU Tigers the sixth best recruiting class in the nation, as ranked by Rivals.com. Les Miles recruited 27 new Tigers, 12 from Louisiana. The class is highlighted by Tredavious White, as you can see here, a five-star defensive back from Shreveport that looks to take the field opposite of Jalen Mills and return kicks and punts for LSU. However, the Tigers missed out on top, top prospect Robert Candici, who picked the Ole Miss Rebels over the Tigers to play with his brother. Alex, how does this new recruiting class complement the current LSU roster? I think these new guys are really going to do well for the Tigers. Frank Heron is going to come in on a defensive line that has been completed with underclassmen leaving for the draft in Mingo, Montgomery, and Logan. And of course, Patrick Pierce's brother, Avery Johnson, is coming to the team, a wide receiver with great hands. Hopefully, he's nearly as good as, as his brother on the offensive end. However, unfortunately, Jordan Jefferson's brother is coming to the team. Dynasty. I don't know how I feel about that, but time will tell. I'll tell you what, over the last two seasons, LSU fans have had to deal with two disappointing bowl losses. They wanted something exciting coming into the season, and this recruiting class did not give them that. They missed out on the top prospect, and yeah, they got a couple of good picks, but the, the fan base needed some rejuvenation. Maybe an offensive coordinator hire could do that, but right now, I'm not impressed. Wow. Well, Pat, tell us how you really feel. <laughs> Big recruiting class this year for Ole Miss. It's a, really a, a surprise. 
What does it mean for the Rebels? Now, the Rebels recruiting class, that's what's exciting. They got the number one prospect in Robert Kimdichie, the number one receiver, Laquan Treadwell. I believe they got the number one offensive lineman, a top 100 safety. I don't know if anyone saw this coming for Ole Miss. They could be a, 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 a presence in the S already very challenging SEC West for years to come. This could go down as the greatest class in Ole Miss history. I, I absolutely agree. This class is incredible for Ole Miss. They got a lot of great guys. But Ole Miss still will not be great this coming year. These freshmen need time to develop. Some of them could even bust. Time will tell. Coming up after the break, we get into the Mardi Gras spirit and give you a New Orleans sports update. Laissez-les bons en roulet.